Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, Let Go and Soar's midweek Wednesday afternoon worship service. So uh, we welcome you all here today. We hope you uh, take something home from this uh, with you today and something you can keep in your heart. So we want I'm Pastor Walt Scott, this is Pastor Sharon Scott, Jim Reese, Brian Taylor standing there behind the camera, you can't see him, but hey, if he turned around, you wouldn't be able to miss him. <laughs> he's, he's a big guy. So anyway, uh, so what we want to do is we want to open with prayer. We have uh, great weather up here right now. We need rain pretty bad, but we're not going to complain about we're the nice weather. It. We're getting it. And we're going to get, we have rain on the way for the weekend. Right. So, uh, so just keep Pray into that for us mm-hmm. that we get a substantial amount and that it keeps up through the next couple of months anyway. Mm-hmm. So let's open with prayer. <clears throat> but Father God, we just thank you for this day, another beautiful day, another golden opportunity to come together and worship the Word and, uh, and uh, you know, be the good news, the salt and the light for uh, anyone that happens to need a little extra today. So we just uh, ask for covering a favor and blessing over this worship service today lord and, and you're definitely invited and welcome to sh- come here and show up in any way shape and form that you'd like to today so, and we just pray for that in jesus name amen 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 aren't you glad that jesus lives yes. aren't you glad Send his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he. living just because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face Uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. Fear is gone because 
very blessed to have well I was gonna say you're my my backup singer but you're not behind me so <laughs> Terry Sue Taylor we, I love it I love it and everybody singing together just pleases God so very much we love it when well Holy Spirit's always with us God's always with us Jesus is always with us but there's really no other way to express how suddenly you just feel an increase of the presence in the room. And I love the way the song uh, expresses that. into the room everything changes darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring when you walk into the room every heart starts burning nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship In all you do, we love you and we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you, we can't get enough. Oh, God, oh, we are, we give you permission, our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you, come and consume God, oh, we are, we give you permission, our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you, come and consume God, oh,
ever seen Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, a name above every other name Jesus, the only one that could ever save Thank you, Lord. 
for this time of worship. Thank you for music, Lord. Oh, yeah. The original music was the sound of the breeze in the trees and bird song and the sound of water over pebbles in a stream. And Lord, we just thank you that you made it possible for us to have a form of music that we could lift up and worship you with. We give you all honor, all glory, and all praise, Lord Jesus. And we pray that this worship bless your heart today. We seal it and we ask your blessing over the message to come through uh, Pastor Walt as he shares with us what you have put on his heart today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good afternoon. We're back. Uh, this is a message today that goes along with that great worship music we just experienced. And I hope everybody's in the mood. Because mm -hmm. that's what worship music is supposed to do, is to put you in the mood to receive. <laughs> open up the heavens, open up your mind, your heart. So, anyway. Uh, I got a word about two weeks ago. And I talked a teeny little bit about it during our home group the other day, which nobody here was in our home group except Sharon. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> Shane and Diana are there too. Yeah, I'm there. But, you don't, there. Remember. <laughs> but you don't remember. <laughs> It's been a week and a half, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Things here. Tend to, yeah. There. But uh, anyway, it's a it's it's a word I got in the morning when I was in, during my <clears throat> meditation, uh, trying to commune with the Lord and uh, and uh, get some uh, get some feedback, some download, which I try to do every day, and usually I get something. Uh, but this particular day, uh, I got a word. It's, it sounds a little odd. It's called introspection. I had to look it up. I mean, I had a, of course, I, had, I knew a little bit about what it meant. I mean, uh, I do have a college degree, which doesn't mean a lot, but <laughs> I still looked it up. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about what I thought about that in a minute. <coughs> so, I want to start out with a scripture that I'm going to read personally that, that actually relates to all of this. Because uh, uh, when we look at ourselves, this is what, this is, this is something that we should see if we call ourselves a Christian. Okay? This is Genesis 1, 26, 27. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Right? And 27 says, God created in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So, what does that tell you about us? If you're calling yourself a Christian, you should be reflecting the image and the likeness of of, of God. Jesus, that's right. Yeah, of God. And at least some, I mean, we're all in a process of sanctification, right? Where we're getting uh, developed more and more in maturity. But uh, we should be acquiring that image and that, uh, that likeness as we move through life, becoming more mature in the Christian faith. So, so the first thing I really had to say was uh, thank you, God, for the revelation and the understanding that I that I received as I went through this whole thing. I just had to start with a thank you for the message because what I considered it a very important communication that I had with the, with God that morning. And I think we've all had communication with the Lord in the morning, haven't we? Yeah. Or during the day or whenever your time of uh, meditation is, whenever you get in your prayer closet, that could be... Any time of the day, really. It's different for different people. Right, Kim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it was important to me, and I hope that, uh, and pray that others also uh, answer questions that uh, continually plague people, humanity. And uh, I pray that I, I can convey it as convincingly as it was to me, as God conveyed it to me. Because, I mean, when he talks to me, usually I get it pretty clear. That's the challenge of a teacher. Pretty clear, yeah. But to, but, to, but to bring that back so that other people understand as well as I did, that's the challenge, isn't it? Right. Yeah, so, so anyway, so let's just let's go ahead and start. So have you ever stopped and just honestly looked inside yourself and examined the truth, the truth, being real honest with yourself, of your worldviews and your perspectives and the motives behind those and your beliefs? I mean... And everybody has a motive behind what they believe. Because from this age on, from the old enough, from the age of being able to understand the English or whatever language you speak, you're you're being fed. You're being fed whatever your world views are, whatever your world perspectives are, your your parents are raising you up with that in your mind. Communication. And uh, not necessarily the truth. Right. 
because in a lot of cases it's not the truth. Mm -hmm. But still, it's you have to replace that with the truth as you as you, if you become a Christian, when you become a Christian, and with the truth of the word. So anyway, have you actually researched the facts to determine their truth and ask God to reveal the truth to you? <coughs> That's important. Has God asked you to look inside yourself and question what you have always presumed to be your foundational truth? I mean, answer it's it's a it's a question, it's a valid question. Has has God ever asked you to do that? Just take a look inside yourself. I mean it's it's so much easier, I think, to look into someone else and hopefully you don't judge. But it's so much easier to say, well, that person's got a situation, that person's got a problem, and that person believes this and it's not really true. But have you ever really looked inside yourself? Hmm. You know? It's that's, that's impo it's important. Sure. It's it's really important to understand yourself <coughs> first before you try to you know look, it's it's kind of reminding me of look look at this look at the look, don't look at the speck in that eye when you got a log in your own. You know? right. Kind of relates a little bit to that scripture, doesn't it? Yeah. So you want to understand yourself and know what what gets you to think and feel the way that you do about everything and anything. So anyway, God told me this morning late that. Uh, one morning lately that I was meditating and when, when I was seeking communion with him that uh, about that and, and I looked up the word to get clarification here's what I'm going to have here's how here is how I will clarify that word the meaning of the word and discover that introspection has a lot of synonyms mm -hmm. self-examination etc 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 but the ones I really spoke to me the most was it's called soul searching or heart searching mm -hmm. and that is important because Soul and heart are very closely related to what you are when you're a Christian. You you look you you know it means a lot. It's it's just people speak to your heart. And God speaks to your heart and, and your soul and your spirit also. But uh, it it kind of uh, instead of continuing looking at the world around us, whether it be the natural world or the supernatural world, because you know as you're a Christian, you can experience the supernatural world in. Uh, and what do they call it when things are side by side like that? Parallel. And parallel. Because you know the supernatural world is all around us just right as we're sitting right here today. Yep. Right alongside the natural yeah, world. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and some people feel it more than others. Some people experience it mm -hmm. more than others. But nonetheless, it's here all the time yeah. with everyone. So, But we also need to look within ourselves. What do we see when we actually do an honest self-examination? It's a good question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're being honest with yourself, you don't lie to yourself. Because a lot of people lie to themselves, don't they? They deceive themselves. They sure try. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can go both ways. Yeah. It can also be the place where you get into depression and things. You think you're worthless or what yeah. have you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you're believing a lie of the enemy. Well, that's that a lie of the enemy. Exactly. We're going to get into a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. So are we content and satisfied with what we are on the inside? And it, and is it is it and it is it is it what we what we portray on the outside, right? Because 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 a lot of people don't portray the real person outwardly to the general public, right? That they really are on the inside. Do we? Is what resides in our heart something that we would sacrifice everything for, or is it flexible and relative to changing situations and circumstances in our life? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the yeah. martyrs, the, the Christian martyrs in the world who are willing to sacrifice everything, including their life, yep. for what they believe. And that still happens today. And it still happens today. And, and uh, but, but I mean, it's, it's a tough question. <coughs> it's a tough question for some, someone like us to answer. Would you be willing to sacrifice your life? Seriously, that's a serious question. Or anything else, any material thing that you have, would you be willing to live in the street under the bridge for what you believe? You know? I don't think any of us really knows until we're confronted with that situation right. and yeah, that you're choice. Right. You're right. We would like to believe that yeah. we could and would. Yeah. Well, in the end times, they say when we have a mark on us that allows us to buy things and interact with society, if you're a Christian, you're not going to have that mark. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult for us to leave, live uh, if that time comes while we're still alive. Because we're going to be persecuted, seriously persecuted, aren't we? And that's going to be a real test of our faith, isn't it? Yeah. 
So, I mean, Revelation says that, and, and that's something I don't really look forward to that, but, uh, and I don't really expect that to happen in my lifetime, but I don't know. That's right. Mm -hmm. None of us know. So. That's right. So, just, just questions. Just, I like to ask questions, because I like people to think about these things. So, so many people in the natural world are walking through time, being someone completely <coughs> alien to God, to who God calls them to be, mm -hmm. don't they? Oh, yeah. Completely alien to that. We call this a, f a false persona or a facade of who we believe we actually are. And we know who we actually are if you do a s close self-examination, don't you? Yeah. So, our actual God-created identity is patiently waiting on the inside for us to reveal to the world. And I say patiently because God is very patient, isn't He? God is extremely patient. He, lets, he wants us to come to Him voluntarily, fully convinced of His truth and His uh, and acknowledge who He is and, and what He did, right? He's the creator of the universe, creator of the world and everything in it. What is discouraging to me is that many in the church, body of Christ, inadvertently do the same thing. It's a, it's a, it, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's, it's that, but I mean, it happens. And, and, I, and I see it. And, we, and I think we all see it. Depending on uh, where, we, where we go to church and who we go to church with. We, we see people, uh, Christians and secular people, that aren't necessarily doing this on purpose, but they try to be something that they really aren't. They try to reflect something that they, they really don't, don't believe or, don't, or aren't really uh, believing. A, per, a false persona, you would say. They're just trying to fit in. Right? Yeah. Just trying to fit in. Yeah. A lot of people just try to just try to fit in and, and not not cause waves and not be a part or stand out from the crowd. Just try to fit in. And they're giving people what they expect to see. What other people expect to see from them. Like I'm saying, I'm just giving an example now. Like saying, I'm saying I'm a good Christian person. I go to church every week. I go to Bible studies. I go to home groups. I go to all these types of things. Yet, I still go out drinking and carousing in the bar and on the side, on the side. I'm not, I don't really do that. <laughs> but I'm saying, that's what I'm talking about, right? You don't that's want to make somebody fingers. else that example. You just want to use yourself. I understand. Well, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to point fingers. No. Nobody, you know. No. But, I mean, those, those, those uh, days are multiple years behind me. <laughs> Decades behind me. Yeah. So, when people do these things, I think it becomes a habit and it produces a false sense of security. And it really does, because they feel they feel more satisfied and content with this thing that lets them fit in with other people in other groups than than they would if they were being the real person, you know, the real individual that God, the real I walking in the real identity, in other words, the, the, the identity God gave them. And you know, if you're a Christian, uh, God still makes us all individuals. We have individual giftings, individual talents and abilities, you know. The, the thing that's going to be uh, a, a common denominator among all Christian people is the fact that they're Christians. It right. doesn't mean that they're all going to act the same way or do the same thing, etc., etc., etc. So you can expect to be a little different. And your gifting is very valuable in the body of Christ. Your particular individual gifting is, is like, a, like a separate little... Uh, part of the body that has its own individual function, and if you try to do what everybody else is doing, the body would be uh, affected in that area negatively because you weren't doing your particular thing. Right. Yeah. Right? So, anyway. So when we say ignorance is bliss, do we believe this is the truth? No. Yeah, it's a, it's a lie from the enemy. Yeah, it is. I believe ignorance is deceit disguised as complacency or fear. And it's a very sad place for us to exist because it's a lie of the enemy. Yes. And that's a fact. It's a lie of the enemy. And he just rejoices when he gets us to do this. He really does. He just rejoices. When, and I'll get into more a little bit of that ignorance. But first I want to read Proverbs 132. And that's me. Oh, that's you. Proverbs no. 132. Yes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. Amen. 
Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Brian. It's not a good place to be. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 34. For that would be me. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness, and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's some good scripture. Mm -hmm. So the gift of free will given to us by God in these times is often expressed <coughs> through ignorance and self-will. It really is. Free will can, is, is a great thing to have. God gave it to us, right? He wants us to voluntarily come to Him and, and, uh, and not be coerced into it or forced into it or shamed into it or any of that. But it also gives us a chance to exercise self-will yes. and remain ignorant mm -hmm. about the truth. We don't have to do that because God didn't say I had to and I'm not going to do it. Oh you know, that's, what, that's kind of what goes through your head. I don't want to know that. And if I don't know it, well, then I don't have to be responsible for it. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's being stiff-necked and self-willed, which we read a lot about that in the Bible, don't it we? It also doesn't work well in a court. <laughs> no. Ignorance of the law that's is right. no excuse. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> to exercise free will with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom requires us to be well-informed about what we speak and the repercussion, repercussion of our actions, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you have to be. Don't, don't open your mouth if you have no idea about what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and don't uh, pretend you do. Put your mind in yeah. motion a, before you put your a, mouth in gear. Right. Yeah. There's a saying for that. Let's see. Fill your mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's a Holy Spirit thing. You know, you ever notice how hard it is to shut somebody up when they start on a <laughs> thing like that? I mean, it's hard mm -hmm. to nudge them and say, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. That's why we ask for Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. So I believe we have to listen to our conscience, which I call the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to you through your conscience, you know. And ask ourselves if we really are seeing the truth. Some people understand and choose to ignore, and others don't know and don't bother to discover the truth. I mean, the, the, I mean it's legitimate. A lot of people don't know the truth, but a lot of people don't want to know the truth. Right. They don't, they don't want to know that. Many believe it is safer to remain in the bliss of ignorance. Really? What I don't know won't hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't yeah. I can't assume responsibility if I never knew better. Yeah. That's the response. Yeah. yeah. I and but you know that that's not that's that's they, not God's truth. No. That's not change. the truth. That God does not want you to remain ignorant. That's right. And He wants you to know the truth. And He was He 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 thinks, and I I'm sure that He believes it's our responsibility to acquire the truth. Be wise as serpents and gentle That's as doves. That's right. Doves. I mean, why why are you here? Why are you why do you exist in this world if you don't want to know anything or do anything? You just want to remain ignorant until you die. I mean, that's that's not a way to live for for me or any anybody I know. So, mm -hmm. so, but that's a deception that's perpetrated by our common enemy, Satan. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? He convinces us through ignorance, distraction, and complacency to take our eyes off God. Just long enough for us to miss an opportunity to advance God's kingdom. And then, when we miss one opportunity, it becomes so much easier to find a reason or excuse to miss another one. Because we didn't, because we feel guilt about missing the first one, yeah. or the one before that. And, and it, it really does work that way too, because I've done it myself. So I'm speaking from experience. There's a saying for that. Yeah. Unpack your bags. God canceled your guilt trip. That's yeah. right. Thank That's you. right. Thank you. So, I believe through introspection, which is that word again, we sometimes see ourselves, see in ourselves, seeds of doubt. Failure. We, and, we, and we do, don't we? Yeah. We've all seen that. Failure. Unbelief yeah. Yeah. and fear, and then we grow them within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us pass up opportunities a lot Weeds of times. Weeds in the garden. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have doubts about our ability to, to, to be the good news, you know, the salt and the light. I learned from Wendy Backlund. She said, whatever you focus on more will grow. Yeah. It'll mm -hmm. get bigger. That's the white dog, black dog. Yep, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you focus on is going to get bigger. So when we grow those seeds, then through deception, Satan convinces us that we have a reason or excuse to justify our actions. And he does that. He's so oh, good yeah. at this. Oh, yeah. 
You cannot fight Satan on your own. <coughs> Impossible. He's much smarter than we are. You need God. You need right. God. You need Jesus. Jesus you need the Holy Spirit to help you all the yeah. time. Yeah. Lead you and guide you and keep you on the keep you focused and keep you on the path because you can't outsmart the devil. Wear the whole no, armor of God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm going to get to that scripture too. <laughs> <laughs> when we see these seeds, we must recognize this is from our common, en common enemy and remember we are God's children and our strong faith, trust, and belief in God will overcome all obstacles that the enemy places in our path. Yeah. All of them. We are overcomers Yay. as followers of Jesus Christ. John 16, 33. That's right. Shame. Yeah. yeah. Right here. I have told you these things so that in... Me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Yeah. Yay. Yay. So, he's, he was, he's, the, uh, he's the first of the brothers. He's overcome. We don't have to worry about uh, having to overcome because he's already done it. We just have yes. to believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, we have to believe. That's all. And I put down, use Job as your example and persevere as he did through the worst adversity that you could possibly oh, imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I can't, uh, no. it's it's it's. I don't know anybody that suffered more than Job did. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for 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 the length of time that he had to suffer, it was he, and, and what he had to go through. He didn't die, but next to it, he probably next wanted to. to. Yeah, I'm he's sure the he originator died. of my favorite quote, which says, "Though you may slay me, still I will trust you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, when we look back into scriptures, as many at the many stories of the people of God who he called throughout the Bible to do whatever he had in had whatever his will was at the time. Do we ever think any of those people ever looked within themselves and when it when when asked by God to do his will? Good question, huh? Yeah. I bet they did. Mm -hmm. Because God asked what seemed to them to be impossible things for them to do. Absolutely. Impossible things they did. Like Noah. Yeah, I, I was look, just gonna say Noah's Ark. Noah <laughs> Or, or it took a hundred years for Noah to build the ark. Yeah. And all this time he remained in perfect faith. Mm -hmm. Six hundred years old when I think when this was done. Under tons of ridicule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And him and just his family had to suffer ridicule of all these people. Yeah. Well, you know what his first question to God was when God told him to build an ark? First question was, what's an ark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. God laid it out pretty good though. Yeah. Didn't he? yeah. Oh yeah. So then we have Moses. Moses. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have yeah. Esther, David, Solomon, Gideon. Abraham. Yes. You have Gideon down Ruth, there. Ruth, Sarah. Well, there's so many. I yeah. didn't find yeah. them all. Yeah. Daniel. Just about everybody in the Bible. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, Ab Abednego. Abednego. Yeah. The twelve disciples. Yeah. And many others that Mary. I didn't even list. Mary, his uh, mother. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just. Yeah, just think about her when the uh, when the uh, angel came to her and says, "Well, we want you to uh, get ready because you're going to be pregnant and you're not having a man first. What? <laughs> Talk about anyway. faith. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> faith, trust. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because she had to put up with a lot of ridicule too. Oh, yeah. she did. Back then, life-threatening ridicule. Yes, yeah. persecution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. They had some severe laws back then. I, I wouldn't have wanted to have been a woman and live back then. Mm -hmm. Or a man, either way. But a woman was even worse. Yeah. Yeah, so. But do you ever think, or do, do you think that any of those folks ever <clears throat> did any self-examination and soul-searching? So they were asked. I know Mary did. I know yeah. she did. I did within her heart. Yep. Yeah. They yeah. had to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, how could you not? I mean, uh, even... Uh, Mm. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, there's uh, that. <laughs> some of the modern day Probably evangelists the like uh, Billy Graham. Yeah. No. He had a period of soul searching. Oh yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah he did. Roberts. And self doubt. Yeah. 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 A, lot, a lot of those guys, you know, yeah. you and, and you wouldn't think they would have, but then again, they're just people, just like us. And uh, they were in, and even Jesus in human form, you know. He. But uh, how did he answer? He said, "He says it is it written." Is written in the world. This is he was challenged. There was times when Oral Roberts was so broken before he was going to go up and preach, they had to carry him <laughs> up to the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And because he just he was so broken before God. And yet he come out with these powerful, powerful sermons. Yeah. 
you know, because he was just mm -hmm. open. He just said, God, you speak, I can't do this. Yeah, come from a place of brokenness, that's the best place you can be if yeah. you're going to be that's speaking true. for God. That's true. Yeah, we have a lot of good examples to to uh, help us along our way, don't we? Yeah. People like that. So, But anyway, I believe these guys all did self-examination and ladies. And I believe they came to the knowledge to just trust and believe in God. Yes. Whether, what other option is there? there? There really isn't any other option, is there? No? So, so Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Is a that good would way. be me. Yeah. Doing that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own oh understanding. Think about him in all your ways and he will guide you on the right paths. Don't consider yourself to be wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. Amen. Healing, healing, healing. And we had some of that last night in tea group. Well, I mean, not tea group. Home group. I can't get home group. Home group. Get mixed up. We had some healing miracles happening in home group last yes. night. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. My knee and yeah. mine's headache. Headache. Nice. Yeah. So, how about Isaiah 55, 8 through 11? Isaiah 55, this is a very encouraging verse, mm -hmm. and I hope it's encouraging for you too. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, mm -hmm. declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens, and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout, and furnish seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire. Right. And with succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Mm. That, those, yeah. those, verses, those verses say a lot. We're not supposed to try to figure God out. Mm-mm. Why waste time? <laughs> just be obedient, stay in the Word, you know, stay with other believers, you know, acquire as much uh, knowledge and understanding and wisdom as you can. Ask God for it. He says right in the Bible, right in the Word that you ask and He will give you. But don't, well, why waste a bunch of time trying to figure him out? One of my favorite yeah. uh, declarations that I've heard when facing a tragedy or, or uh, you know, some terrible thing, hurricane, tornado, whatever, and to just declare over, wow, God, I just can't wait to see what you do with this. You yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's not living in fear. It's it's like, okay, this is huge. i got to see what God's going to do with this. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. trusting Him that He's got it. That's Romans 8, 28. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. He uses all things. Mm -hmm. For yeah. the good of those who love him and are called to his purpose. Yeah. So, one of my favorite verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say some things, it says all <coughs> things. That's right. That's right. All things. So, we see in, in the secular world today many gifted people who have not developed a relationship with God. Pre saved. And, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, uh, well, I'll get into it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they are gifted in many ways through different skills, abilities, and talents. Although they, as well as Christians, had to develop these gifts, didn't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were a gift, but you still have to develop it. Usually, We yeah. have to acknowledge that the raw gift of itself is from our Creator God. Mm -hmm. You have to. If we don't make this acknowledgement, we are deceiving ourselves and believing the enemy's lie, which a lot of secular people do. But... I see and hear so many expressions of these perfected gifts every day in the natural world and I discern a common, ever-present yearning for connection and truth. And this is where I have to be a little, a little critical of Christians who criticize secular <laughs> expressions. I really do because, number one, we're supposed to love each other. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be a forgiving people and love is supposed to be unconditional. And we're supposed to recognize in the world of unbelievers or pre-believers when someone is actually trying to reach out through an expression of whatever gifting they may have and we're and we're not shouldn't criticize it we should we should reach a hand out there somehow 
-hmm. somehow reach a hand out and try to help or try to give an explanation. In today's world with all this, these electronic connections we have, you can practically reach anybody. Mm -hmm. You can reach the president. Mm -hmm. Just get on Twitter. Yeah. You know, you can reach anybody in the entertainment world, in the sports world, you name it. Just send out a message, you know. It's liable to get back to them somehow. So these expressions come through secular sources such as music and art, but so many, ex and other things, but so many express a desire for truth and meaning in a lost world. And, uh, and they're searching. And they have a little bit of, of, uh, of revelation and knowledge that something in their life and their world is not the way it should be. You know what that brings to my mind? And you may even be mentioning this John Lennon song, All You Need Is Love, The Beatles. All you need is love. Or imagine. Yeah, or imagine. They're so close. Yeah. Yeah. So close, you know. Yeah, and see, I mean, and uh, and it's not just it's not just them. It's multiple oh, people. No. Even, yeah. the, even the people that do things today. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of uh, stuff that's got a lot of the enemy behind it. Yeah. You could tell by this or just listening to it. Yeah. But there's a lot of things out there where people are, it's, it's secular music, mm -hmm. they're reaching out, or it's secular art. Mm -hmm. Or you know whatever they're reaching, they're, they're trying to find something, and they just haven't quite got there yet. Searching. We should be trying to help them with that. So why is it Christians criticize these expressions instead of offering the good news of Jesus Christ? Why is it? Mm -hmm. why, why do we do that? We shouldn't do that because you know that just puts people off even further. Yep. That pushes them away from what we know they need to receive. That's placing yourself above them, it, which we are not. And, to and do. believe me, God doesn't love you. Any more than he loves them, That's or any right. less. <laughs> so he wants them to come to repentance and come to uh, salvation. You know, it's like, it's like, I have to get to the lost sheep. We're the 99. That person is one, the one that's out there. And that's the person that God wants. And that's the person that God's going to go after. And that's the person he wants us to go after and bring in. Yeah. He's very concerned about those people. And... Uh, so there's a cry in the wilderness for meaning and purpose, what we could call the lost sheep. People search and hope for honesty, something to completely trust in, and that's hard to find. I know everybody. Whether you never become a Christian or not, you want to be able to trust in something completely and not feel that you're going to get hurt by someone or something or stabbed in the back. Or You want to be able to trust. Well, basically in this world there's only... <laughs> There's only one place you're going to find that. And uh, someday, I know everyone's going to know that and understand that. may not be just yet. Uh, you know, it, sometimes it takes time. But And then everyone's looking for forgiveness. You know, especially uh, not just forgiveness from others, but they want to be able to, to, to find forgiveness for themselves, through themselves, for what they did. And they want to know that they can step away from a life that, that they have... Uh, maybe not been uh, a great example for the rest of the people around them. They want to be able to step out of that and have people forgive them for that and not bring it up, not remember it. Just like God said, remember, remember your sins no more. Mm -hmm. That's part of the new covenant mm -hmm. that uh, Jesus brought. And uh, people, want it. people want that forgiveness. They need that forgiveness in order to move on. Yep. Just like all of us would, you know. And then perhaps the most important, that this unconditional love. It's so important that we don't put conditions on love. Uh, because God doesn't. And if we're supposed to be in the image and the, and the uh, likeness of God, then we have to reflect that, that image that way. Right? Is that Jim? Right, Jim? I know Jim's on board. <laughs> I'm on board. Jim's on board. Committed Christians find all of these in relationship with triune God. I say triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Oh. There is no other source. He is our portion, isn't he? Yes. yes. Our portion. We talked about that in T group. I remember that a week or two ago. And uh, so I want uh, someone to read Psalm 73, 26. Who is that? Who did I give that to? I don't think, I think you were going to read that because I have Romans 12, 3. I'm going to read Psalm 73, 26. My flesh and my heart fails. But God is my strength, the strength of my heart, and my portion forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, very simple voice of verse, but it's, it, it has so much meaning. Yeah. So much meaning. Everything we have is our portion while we exist on this earth. Mm -hmm. 
After we are gone, these material things are passed on to another for a time. God even distributes one, our portion of faith, so let's share it. Like it says in Romans 12.3. Mm -hmm. Who has that one? I do. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Uh, yeah, see? God has distributed a level of faith to every one of us. And uh, we need to respect that. So, what is the truth in all this that we just talked about? What is the truth? Will we still have hidden fear, doubt, and unbelief? Probably. You know, we're, we're just... We're, we're, the sanctification process is a process, and we, uh, and we mature as we go along, but we still have times when this happens. But we know what to do in those times when they happen, don't we? Go to the Lord. Go to the Word. <clears throat> Go to other people that are strong Christian brothers and sisters and commune. Yep. So, we happen to know what his phone number is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, remember? Yes. yes. Uh, that's uh, Jeremiah 33 3. That's right. Yeah. Call on me and Jesus I will answer you and I will tell you things you do not know. Yeah. So, we probably will have those, but we will have the weapons to overcome and defeat our enemy, as it says in Ephesians 6 10 through 18 which describes all of the armor of God. Which I wasn't going to read, but if somebody wants to read that, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. Uh, Ephesians what? Chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Oh, I recognize oh, that's not bad. that. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. You can read that if I'd you like. I'd be happy to. The armor of God. <clears throat> I'm going to read it from the Amplified. Okay. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from Him and be empowered through your union with Him, and in the power of His boundless might. Mm. Put on the full armor of God, for His precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armored soldier, mm. so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Yeah. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly or supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. Mm -hmm. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, Lift up the protective shield of faith, which, which, excuse me, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests mm -hmm. at all times, on every occasion, and in every season, in the Spirit, and with this in view. Stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. Amen. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? Ooh, That's yeah. powerful. That's very powerful. I wonder if when he wrote that, he realized how, how impactful that was. Yeah. You know, that statement was. Yeah. That's huge. Well, Holy Spirit knew him. Yeah. He was the one telling him what to say. Yeah. <laughs> that's what was going through my head just I was going to say, in case, like most pastors, he looked down and went, wow, that's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> so with God's help, we will gain strength and confidence and we'll grow. We will become conquerors. Yes. During our sanctification process, we will be attacked less and less severely by our enemy if we stay in close relationship with God the Word in our brothers and sisters in Christ. Satan will concentrate on weaker targets. 
We, through the Great Commission, can help to remove these targets by bringing the good news of Jesus Christ and, the, and bring the victory of, for the kingdom of God, bring these people into relationship. That way we remove all the targets. Satan won't have a target. Amen. <clears throat> I believe during introspection we can listen to God more effectively and discover the truth of our life and the path he wants us to walk. Let's not remain ignorant, confused, or unsure of our purpose. Let's not limit ourselves with preconceived expectations of our capabilities or who or whose we are. Mm -hmm. Let's live in expectancy of who and what mm -hmm. God says we are. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. Love and peace, amen. Amen. That's, that's my message. But, uh, Great. And of course I wanted to offer up a, um, you know, what we, what we normally refer to as an altar call for anyone that's interested and maybe has uh, finally become convinced that this is the path they want to take. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't say the time is short. I can't say the time is long because I have no concept of when Jesus is coming back. All I know is he's coming back someday and uh, it could be any time, any place and we're supposed to be prepared. So, uh, take that with a grain of salt, you know, and, and think about it and listen. And if you decide that you, uh, that you want this relationship, which actually is, uh, you can erase this fear of losing your freedom because real freedom only comes in relationship with the Lord. Amen. It, that's the only place you find it. And you won't know that until you've actually entered into that relationship, you know. You used to have a good friend that said, just give God 90 days. Yes. And that's all you need. Sometimes you won't even need 90 days. Right. But just, you know, that's a, that's a nice average length of time. Just give God 90 days to prove what He says is the truth in His Word. And all you have to do is just say, Lord Jesus, I've been a sinner. Uh, I believe that uh, that you came in, uh, in human form as Son of Man, Son of God. You uh, stayed, we were on the earth about 33 years. You came with the purpose to give us an example and to bring us a new covenant of, uh, of grace and truth. Give your life up on the cross. You died and you rose again three days later to be the first of many brothers and sisters. So, just say in your heart, Lord, I just want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. I believe you. I want to walk with you. And uh, I repent. I'm going to change the direction of my life. I need your help to keep me on that path. And he'll be there for you. He'll be there for you. And so will other brothers and sisters. You need to be around other brothers and sisters. You need to be uh, connected to a, uh, a spirit-filled Bible-teaching church. And then uh, you shouldn't have a problem. And, but you need that. You need that uh, that mentor that mentoring. You can't just say you're going to do this and then go out on your own because generally you'll fall right back off the off what you just said you wanted to do and fall right back into your old habits. You need to erase those old habits and replace them with new habits. So I just, in Jesus' name, I pray and I uh, I just ask for a covering and blessing and favor and uh, and uh, put that hope in your heart. Put that hope in your heart that love for your fellow uh, your fellow men and women. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.